work. Just, you know, go back a little bit. If they come sweating. I want to say greetings to all who are at home tuning in, all of my elders. I would love to say greetings to all who are tuning in, who are my peers, children, and all the babies. And greetings to all who are in the building tonight. Woo! We went through great lengths to get here. Many obstacles this year. But we continued to see through, persevere, and remain resilient. Yeah, I'll take one of those. What you are witnessing here is true cooperative economics, collective work responsibility, Kaumba, Nia, Imani, and of course, Umoja. At Almsgiving Collective, we practiced in Nguzu Saba 365 days a year, African black solidarity all day, every day. But you already know that. Yeah, y'all can clap it up. Clap that. All right. Um, um, um. Thank you, Baba Raphael. Thank you, Baba Raphael. If you don't know, we have started a signature chant here at the Thanksgiving celebration. You see something you like, you say Ankh. Even if you don't like it, you say Ankh. Because we are keeping our people Ankhed up, keeping us vital resurrecting some of our people and making sure we stay activated. All right? So without further ado, I'd like to, is Nana, Nana Bakan, you are joining us. I, I'm not screaming. Nana Bakan will please lead us in libation. We're going to start this off formally and officially. Give thanks. Nana Bakan. Thanks for all of our righteous warriors. 
Ashe. 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 Introduction into our program. And without further ado, drummers, are y'all ready? Yes. Let's get it on and on. Thank you. 
Blueprints for Love and Life. The next piece is a piece from Mama Fabian Miranda, which will be presented by Purity Nyila. I am focused, I am centered, I am disciplined. Yes. I have pride in myself. What? Pride in myself. I have a body and a mind. A body and a mind. My spirit lives inside. My spirit lives inside. I am connected, connected, connected to the drums. I am connected, connected, connected to my family. Connected, connected, connected to myself. I love myself. Don't push me, don't shove me. Put no one above me. Love me, protect me. I am an African child. originated in Guinea, West Africa. It's a dance of strength and determination. So that's why we chose this, because in the midst of this colonial pandemic, we are determined to be united and to be strong. So we will do this little piece here, the Dudumba. Give thanks to the African love drummers and all the brothers that are sitting in in one love and unity. Could you draw your chair back just a little? Because this is the little area we have.
people's struggle has not yet been done on this land and on this entire planet. Black people give us this day with our daily praise that we will use our past to help construct our future. We shall never forget the white man's trespasses. We shall never forgive the white man's trespasses. Nor can we forget our people who have turned against us. No more living and leading in temptation. We must deliver each other from harm and evil. For black is our power. Our freedom from the oppressor is the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Give thanks. I'd like to start by introducing our almsgiving representative, Brother Father El Nakor. Peace and blessings, um, um, and more alms. Um, um, following with our itinerary for this program this evening should be the next is the youth awardee, Sister Miracle Robinson. And unfortunately, she's not present at the moment. Um, her award, Miracle Robinson, is a young sister from out of the Bronx whose mother, Shaniqua Charles, is running for office in the 78th District in the Bronx. Um, they have a community center up on Webster Avenue, 2477 Webster Avenue, where it is the only productive program and format that is in the borough of the Bronx at this present moment. They feed the hungry on a daily basis. They help mothers with children and it's an extensive program for children similar to what the Thanksgiving Committee or Collective is doing for the community as well. It's a nation building format at the um, center for Shaniqua Charles. Mikkel Robinson is not only one of the youngest entrepreneurs in the country, she has her own business, she makes clothes, she also has um, Style by Miracle, which you can find on Instagram as well as um, Facebook. She also performs, she's a great poet, she's an activist, she has been a part of just about everything that her mother has done from prison reform to um, community activism, building things in the community for the growth and development of the children, specifically black and brown children. Speak up, please. I think they're asking you to speak up a little louder. Um, yes, as I was saying, that Sisto has her own business. Um, it's called Style by Miracle. She makes clothing. She does cosmetics. She's also a poet. And to my knowledge, she's doing her first album this year. I don't exactly remember the name of the album, but she's definitely one of our key youth awardees. We have an award for her. And as I'm going to read what the award says. Um, do you have the words? Yes, I'm going to read it out. Um, our Youth Award reads, Thanksgiving Youth Award reads, Thanksgiving Certificate of Recognition on this day, 27th of November, 2020. It is with great pleasure the Thanksgiving Collective presents Miracle right. Robinson in honor of your outstanding continuous contribution towards promoting and preserving our culture. We acknowledge, encourage, and support all of your efforts towards the liberation of our people. Um, Give it up. Um, Next we have um, the Zayak School with the aunts. Oh, no, they, they, they didn't bring the arms yet, so we're going to move forward, sorry. So our next one is Quadro on Keys. All right. Are you using these? Are going to use this, the keyboard over there, the piano? Oh, okay. Are we ready for him yet? All right. Drummers, give us some music in the meantime, please. Little drum. All right. Off the record, y'all. Thank you for that. Right. <laughs> 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 without 
giving him his proper Ankh introduction. It gives me great pleasure to announce to you Quadro on Keys. <laughs> to your mother, your father, your family, you yet can survive by the power of Almighty of Jeet Nyame, 
who's called Chitinyame amongst the Ghanaians, who's called Ama amongst the Dogo, who's called Olorumare Olurun Ileda amongst the Yoruba, who's called Onkulunkulu um, uh, in the south of the continent, uh, who's called Nzambi um, amongst the people of Central Africa. So that the descriptions of these all aspects of who God supreme is, when you collect them all, the Islamic people will say the 99 accolades of God supreme. And the Christians will come behind and they will have endless names as door opener, way maker, and indeed, almsgiving is what we do. We give thanks. Why? Because God inhabits the praises of his people. Uh, God inhabits the praises of his people, uh, her uh, people. The mother aspect is never left out in the whole equations. We know that in the divine kingship system, it's the women that get together to decide whose son will sit on the throne as the successor of the Ashanti Hini, of the, the, the King of Kings. And so we are so grateful for the family of Deni Zulu, of Kamati Zulu, all of the people, uh, Nana uh, Bakan, um, the, all of the ones that brought the traditions of the Akan uh, from Ghana into the Americas. And we went there to find what we could and bring back what? Almsgiving, uh, so that we could give praises. And at the same time, we do it with the economics, we do it with the culture, and we do it um, uh, economics, culture, and politics. Uh, so that's why we, I did call Kwame Nkrumah. So we call the Pan-Africanists, who when they had the scramble for Africa, Europeans coming to take over the entire continent, we had warriors who understood that you had to be sober and work your way through uh, with the ancestors. We understood that people didn't understand Kwame Nkrumah, what he was doing when he was building Tema the city of industrial power, knowing too that we in America would be living in the industrial power with all of the inventions and new inventions, the solar energy that we use to raise the crops and solar energy for electrical currents. Uh, we have currents that is even more so like the Volta Dam in Ghana. Uh, like as great Zimbabwe, the waterfalls. Oh, what a great people we have come from. Uh, you know, there was a famine in prehistoric times, and that famine was called, uh, we know it from the Metametra hieroglyphics, uh, it's written about, called the famine stele, prehistoric. Uh, apparently, the Nile River Hapi was drying up and it gave no nourishment, there was no crops, and the people were dying in a pandemic. And so what did they do? They found unsgiving. Uh, they went to the south, to the origin, the southern part, and they found out a whole ceremony of giving thanks. You cannot leave God out when you want to do something progressive. <coughs> and so, in that famine, they found a way to thanks and continue to give thanks from the depth of their being, their heart. And they brought the formula back to Kenneth. And so thus, even before the pyramids were built, we know of our people surviving. We know of a great famine in the ecology around Chad, uh, around Niger. Uh, um, uh, even the North people in Nigeria, and they were uh, dying out. The paleontologists went looking for mastodon elephant bones, but instead of finding the bones, they found thousands of bones of black families where they were dying during that particular time. 
So this is just to say that uh, there were many famines throughout the history, and look at us today surviving. We survived doing what? Giving thanks uh, for the green pastures, uh, for the still waters. We give thanks. We give thanks for the grass. And I am thankful for the plant. Look at this plant, beautiful plant that was given to me by the almsgiving. Uh, we think about the flowers, the, uh, um, the, the uh, different type of roses, the carnations, the sunflowers. Uh, we think about the lotus blossom, the sweet smells. We are thankful that we can go to the park and to see nature as it is. Uh, we go to the supermarket. Children, when you go to the supermarket with your, uh, your parents, Give thanks and look and see how beautiful the coconuts are uh, made. Uh, we're saying that put on your mind those things that are beautiful, lovely, and are of a good report. A good report because it takes you through uh, giving you the joy of life, the joy of family, the stability that you need to continue on. Look at the lusciousness of the tomato. Uh, look at the, uh, uh, the, the coconut. Look at the uh, pineapple. Look at the pears. Look at the variety of many apples. And then look at the variety of us. Look at the beauty in your own parents that take care of you. And so that part of our education within the black system is to teach the children to see the beauty in their parents, their uncles, their aunts, their uh, seniors, their wise people. Uh, look at how they have struggled through and managed to continue so that you might have life and have that life in abundance. Oh, grateful, grateful, grateful we are. Because if we go too much on the negative with unpleasant energy, uh, digging up all kinds of uh, endorphins in our systems, etc., those are the things that tend to pollute the blood, but we want the joy of life. Thank God for children. Thank God for children, the honesty that they are born with, and for the care parents that bring them to the school. Uh, Come on. Files. The trials of uh, the children's problems takes care of the mumps and the measles and all of those. So when you hear about the coronavirus, don't be too sad. We are sad for our friends and our people that have passed away, but always know that you have the keys to survival. What is it? It's your testimony. Let no one take away your testimony, what God has brought you through, the mumps, the measles, the this, that, and the other, the normal thing. And if God did it for you one time, he can continue to do it for you. And the greatest of all things is the great love because God loves you so much, so much, so much because you were created in his image. Always keep that in mind. Thank you. Yes. Uh, 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 Thank you, Queen Mother. I may have to read a little bit and then come back. And then I have to do, but I may read a little bit and come back. OK. And then also try to hook in tomorrow. But I thank you for all of the oh, wonderful thank you. I thank you for the gifts, my gifts, my <laughs> balloon right here. Oh. I'll be here all day, today, tonight, tomorrow. Yes. And I'll be seeing you again. I thank you for weaving the products that come from those who are developing their economic uh, systems. Uh, here's what I have. A wonderful, wonderful present that uh, yes. we make it out of Tempe. Yes. Tempe Saturn, uh, so that we are reminded of that. We are reminded, too, of how the educators have had to bend over backwards 
in order to raise our children the way they are. We know that the black schools from uh, CB, you know, uh, in the old days, we know about the black schools from um, Sophia uh, Malabuti. That was in Chicago. Like this is the one, one of the booklets. We remember Amos Wilson and the books he wrote. Uh, Jawan Bukunjufu. We know him from that book about the conspiracy against our black children. And uh, we know Asa Davis. Uh, who was very, very special uh, to us. We know Dr. Betty Shabazz, yes. who yes. interested in children at Mega Evans and Dr. King. So Thanksgiving is standing on the shoulders of good history, continuing on the tradition. Say, amen. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you immensely. And thank you so much, Queen Mother, Professor Rosalind Jeffries. Thank you so much. And we want to wish you once again, you and Baba Jeffries, a happy anniversary. And we know you are here. We feel you here. And thank you for that wonderful, wonderful presentation and Zooming in with us this evening. When our elders... Okay, thank you so much. When our elders are pleased, we know we are doing something right. Whenever we can bring our elders, our babies, children, adolescents, and everyone in between, it keeps us motivated, it keeps us fortified. So thank you so much once again for all those who are at home, tuning in, zooming in, and those of us who are here live at our Thanksgiving. Next I'd like to call another beloved brother of mine who has been very, very active. I think I know this brother maybe close to 20 years. Um, uh, more than 20 years. And um, he has been not only uh, a good brother to me, he has been a huge supporter of our almsgiving efforts. Um, he is also, today is one of the Brothers in Black. We always have Brothers in Black at our programs, not as security, but to keep our people feeling secure. It is important to see strong black men. Give thanks. So I'd like to call up my brother, Enten Fuzi, Ralphie. Present appreciation to Sister Murr. I've known Sister Murr since 2003. So that's like 17. We got 17 in. And, um, you know, I met her parents, and I think that the way in which they, you know, raised her and groomed her helped to provide her with the kind of uh, insight to come up with the idea of having an event like this, the, the Anks Giving Collective, like building a, a collective. And with that, I think that as a collective, I think that all other organizations need to join the collective so that we can all basically like form like a, like a strong revolutionary and cultural formation. So we can all like work together and learn together and share together and so on and so forth. The, the, the issue is that we can all benefit from each other's strength and so on and so forth. But, um, you know, in terms of the alms given as an alternative, you know, I mean, we all probably know people that we've been talking to for 10, 15 years about celebrating Thanksgiving, which is a colonial holiday, you know, and um, they, they seem to just continue to go ahead and do it anyway. And, you know, like, really the history has to do with, okay, they had this little pilgrim thing and all that kind of stuff, but a few years after that, they were celebrating this big, they had this feast, they were celebrating the massacre right. of the people that had welcomed them. Right. You know what I mean? And that, that, that narrative is controlled by the same people who control our children, the education that we've got and, and our children got and so on and so forth. In right. fact, they control the circumstances that surround our existence completely. All right, and that's how we're getting gentrified, that's how we're getting killed and so on and so forth. When you look at the whole situation with the native people that were that, that you know that weren't massacred that are now on these concentration camps called reservations. You look, I look at some of the different cases that they've been involved in over the years, and um, in every case when they're trying to struggle with for their land and this and that, the courts up until Ruth Bader Ginsburg in 2005, they come up with this thing called um, the doctrine of discovery. They, they cite the doctrine of discovery, meaning that when white folks came. White Christians came and, and claimed sovereignty over the land and the people. 
and that the people weren't really people. Y'all were just, um, y'all just had the right of occupancy. Y'all didn't have any rights as human beings or as residents of land. You, so, so what happens is they come and they take their land for this, they come take their land, they gentrify us, da 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 da, da they kill us. So, the, the, at the end of the day, the, the Native American, I'm not, you know, I'm not knocking them, they going through their little struggles and so on and so forth, but in, in, in this particular day and time, you know, we building, or we have built, and, and we're continuing to build an organization that is uh, established to gain self-determination. We're going to struggle until we're free. We, we, we think that self-determination is the highest expression of democracy. All right? Not the democracy that they talk about as far as like you can vote for either Biden or Trump or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right? We want to fight and build the kind of world that we want for our children and for ourselves. And I say for ourselves because it would be coward of us, it would be cowardice of me to make a statement as if to say, uh, we're gonna leave it in my, my children's hands to fight this battle and so on and so forth. I'm gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We need to start today. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to invite everybody to get down with building this revolution. You know, where I'm, I'm a member of an inter, uh, uh, international people's democratic Uhuru movement. That's a grassroots organization. That's the kind of organization where all the masses can get in and they can contribute whatever time, energy, resources that they want to contribute towards advancing the African revolution. All right? But in the, in the course of that, you're learning more and more about the strategy for how it is that we're going to do what it is that we have to do, which is to gain self-determination, is to get free. All right, we're under a, revol a revolutionary organization, which is a little, a little more disciplined and so on, and that's our leadership and so on. But what ha what, at the end of the day, our objective is to get every African throughout the diaspora free. We got people all spread out throughout, like Latin America, uh, you know, uh, Africa, we, New, New Zealand, this and that. All people that are not uh, that are colonized right now in the same situation that we're in, because we are. Despite the fact that we might get a couple of dollars at a job and we could go into Bergdorf and we could get whatever, blah, 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 this and that, and we could go dig a drawing and get a Cadillac, we're colonized. We're domestic, we're, 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 we're domestic, we're colonial subjects. We're a domestic colony in this country and we are not free. We don't have any rights that the white man is bound to respect. Straight up and down. So I would like to invite everybody here to become aware of our, our, our organization. We got a little table over there on the side. We got our latest newspaper and so on, the Burning Spear, which is the oldest revolutionary newspaper on the ground. It's like the voice of African Revolution. Uh, we got some people back there that are ready to chop it up with y'all in terms of whatever questions y'all might have. And I'd like for anybody who recognizes the truth from what I said to check us out right. and let's get down and let's build this revolution. Ashe. International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. And with that being said, I'd like a drum roll, please, as we're about to call up another honoree. Ooh, that rhyme, right? Yeah. Can I get a drum roll, please? Calling up honorees. A drum roll, please. We calling up honoree. Touch wood! Touch wood! Touch wood! Touch wood! Touch wood! 
said Ankh Ankh and more Ankh. I'm gonna say Ankh exponentially. Um, you know, um, I, I'm extremely honored and um, I'm a, a kind of speechless, but I'm gonna try to muster up a couple of words just to show my appreciation for the folks that are here, the people that are home. Uh, so I want to give salute to the, uh, my leadership, Chairman Amali Eshatella, yes. founder of the African People's Socialist Party and the Rural Movement. Uh, and my uh, direct leadership, uh, President Columbia and Danette, who's actually running for office in St. Louis, Missouri right now. Uh, so we're gonna post some links up so that uh, the, our people know what's going on. But um, there's a misconception that black folks don't stick together. You know what I'm saying? Um, and these misconceptions are put forth by our colonizers, who uh, our division, you know, helps uh, aid them in their colonialism against us. Uh, what we're saying is we need to be an organized people. We need to be fighting for self-determination. Um, our people, we're not really concerned with racism. Uh, we're concerned with power. Because uh, power is, is a real uh, thing that keeps the, uh, the state from murdering us in the streets. Uh, like they did in uh, Philadelphia, like they do last week, like they do every single damn day. Uh, it's the same uh, colonialism that's responsible for the deaths being higher when it comes to COVID-19 for African people, which is uh, nothing more than a colonial virus, because our people are dying every single day, and here these people are acting like they really care about us to, to take these protocols and what have not. That's why we have our own protocols that we utilize inside our own organization, right? Uh, we got to take each other, because nobody's going to take care of us but us, you know? Um, and I, you know, I implore everybody to join organization, join organization, join organization. You come out here as an individual, the state will murder you. You know what I mean? Um, you come out here as an individual, you are unprotected, you don't have no security. So whether it's the Aunt's Giving Collective, join organization. I, I want to employ everybody to join the Uhuru Movement, the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. We say Uhuru because Uhuru means freedom is also welcoming and agreed that we use amongst our comments. And ain't nobody going to fear us but us. Not no Biden, not no Kamala, uh, not Obama, and the rest of these people. We got to understand clearly that there's a, such a thing as colonialism that says, you know, when they can't dominate our people no more, what they do is send somebody out that look like us, mm. to trick us, to right. dominate us. Yeah. That's the only thing stopping us from us getting our freedom or the sellouts yeah. and white power itself. So we got to be able to recognize black power and white face. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that the comments are able to recognize what we need to do to actually get free. You know what I mean? We got to get organized. That's it. Um, you know, I, I said a couple of sayings earlier, and um, I don't want to take up too much more time, but I, I'm extremely, um, extremely honored and inspired to see other people here, the people tuning in, my comrades in the background, a hoodoo to a Kemba, a hoodoo to a Set, a hoodoo to Rafiq, a hoodoo OG Malik, a hoodoo to Rondi who's not even here, but the, he's here in spirit, a hoodoo Stella, a hoodoo Mer, a hoodoo Alice Giving give Collective, you know what I mean? Um, a hoodoo African people all over the world. We got our children. A to the elders, a hoodoo to our youth. Yo, we got it, I'm telling you, more now more than ever. Yeah. There's no excuse, no excuse. They ain't coming to save us. Yeah. You see what happened with Katrina. You see what happened with Sandy out here. I'm, I'm, I implore you, we gotta, we gotta get free. We gotta get free. That's the only way we're gonna have some real uh, unk in our, you know, in, you know, we're gonna have some life. You know what I mean? That's where we're gonna get that unk. We gotta get free, you know what I mean? Um, I, think, I think I've um, exhausted my time, and again, I, I'm just, Extremely appreciative, inspired, 
Uh, shout out to my fiance, uh, Avani. I ain't forget you. Uh, Major Hulu to Comrade Nicola, who we lost from the colonial virus earlier this year. Uh, major Hulu to uh, Musa Bantu, Omawali K. Thing, once again a longtime member of our organization. And um, we, we, all we got is us, right? But all we need is us, comrades. Uhuru. You can't see it. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Brothers in black. Brothers in black. Okay. I'm gonna give you some help with the orders that's coming in the orders. All right. You know, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give that. America started the UNIA movement. He was able to organize and galvanize millions of Africans worldwide. Yes, he had a plan, you know, and without saying too much more, I would like to, which we are very honored and humbled to have before us the president of the UNIA with us today, President General Michael Johnson. One destiny. One destiny. Long live Marcus Garvey. Brothers and sisters, my name is Michael Duncan. I'm the tenth successor to the honor of Marcus Messiah Garvey, meaning I'm the eleventh President General of the UNIAACL. Everything I speak, everything I do, is from the word and the works of the honor of Marcus Messiah Garvey. I don't believe, but I know that Marcus Garvey is the greatest man that ever walked on earth, and he was sent by our ancestors and the creator himself. So I'm here just in the process of representing the honor of Marcus Messiah Garvey and the UNIA. Uh, brothers and sisters, over 100 years, this organization, this government was built for African people. And it's an honor to be associated with this great group. Uh, for me, I am thankful just to be here, being here. I was born on the island of Jamaica, came to these shores when I was 14. At that point, I realized that after taking the time to read the philosophy and opinion of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, I realized that I was in fact not a Jamaican, but an African born in Jamaica. That's right. That has just changed my life since the age of 17, living in Brooklyn until now. And brothers and sisters, we are here to put back the UNIA. What happened after they destroyed the Garvey movement? What they made sure that they separated us. They gave a lot of us money to create organization so we wouldn't organize under the same banner of the UNIA anymore. In 1919, 400 leaders of the world got together and they say to themselves, are we going to let this one man destroy what we built? So at any means necessary, they had to get rid of Mr. Garvey. But what Mr. Garvey said, he said truth crushed to the earth must rise again. And we as African people, we are rising that truth. Brothers and sisters, we cannot say that we are free. And we're still wearing the clothes that they gave us to wear. Right. That's why my clothes is made in Liberia with the red, black, and green on it. We cannot say we are free and we are worshiping the same way they taught us to worship. Brothers and sisters, their God is not our God. Their Bible is not our Bible. Brothers and sisters, we have to get our own. Mr. Garvey said, what man has done, man can do. We taught the world. He said, chance has never yet satisfied the hopes of a suffering people. Brothers and sisters, aren't we suffering? Aren't they killing our young man? What are we going to do about it? Brothers and sisters, 
sisters, I've been through the streets of South Africa, through Durban. I've been through the streets of Louisiana, Florida, St. Thomas, St. Croix, Haiti, Trinidad, Liberia, Ghana. And the same thing I see, these people control our economic system. In Liberia, the Lebanese, they control the supermarkets, them and the Indian. In Ghana, the same thing. In Jamaica, you have the Syrian, you have the Chinese, you have the Indians. But it's no different. I look where I live in Southeast Queens. And who control the supermarkets? We don't. So what we did, I organized 200 of us. And we put $1.7 million together. And we opened the rock. We opened the rock. It's a wholesale black supermarket owned by black people, by us, brothers and sisters. Each and every one of you should be shopping there. Because we cannot say the man is killing us, but then we are financing him from buying from his supermarket. It doesn't matter where you live. Come to the rock where it's owned by African people, controlled by African people. African people manage it. And African people are going to benefit from it. We can't say we are free and we want freedom, but we keep going to them and spending our monies with them. Find our institutions and make that difference. That's right. Brother, as and sisters, Mr. Garvey said, we must let Africa be our guiding star, our star of destiny. Yes. That's why my home is Liberia. Yes. Brothers and sisters, I just came back from Liberia. Welcome. I booked a flight on the 7th of March. I went to Liberia. I had a return flight on the 21st of March to return. But as the ancestors would have it, when I got to the airport, they said, Mr. Duncan, we're not taking any more passengers. COVID-19 has closed down Liberia. It was the happiest thing for me because I got the opportunity to spend eight months in Africa. I lived in Liberia for the last eight months. I just come back last week and I don't want to be here anymore because brothers and sisters, while I was here, my, height, my, my, so my pressure was going up. It's hard for a black man pressure not to go up in this country. My sugar level was going up. My weight was going up. But eight months in the sun, getting that vitamin D, all those things have somewhat declined. The hypertension, the weight, everything. Brothers and sisters, but what happened? We, the UNIA, we build a farm in Liberia. Liberty Farm. We are growing all types of vegetables right now. We're selling to the supermarkets. We're selling to the hotels. We're selling it to the market people. That's right. Brothers and sisters, my job here is the responsibility of taking every Africa back to Africa, the continent. Mr. Garvey brought Africa to us. We are bringing us to Africa. So we do two trips a year to Ghana and Liberia because we are building our own industry there. In 1919, Mr. Garvey, Mr. Garvey signed on to build that biggest city, that super city that should have been built in Liberia. And from that city, we as African people were supposed to take back Africa. All of you know what they did to Mr. Liberia. Mr. Mr. Garvey had secured one million acres of land in Liberia for one dollar per acre. The US government the English government, the French government, they bamboozled Liberia and forced Liberia to give that land to Firestone. Where Firestone have been operating there since 1919. They got the same land Mr. Garvey was gonna pay a dollar for, for six cents an acre. Wow. But brothers and sisters, it's up to us. It's how bad we want this. Mr. Garvey left the black prince for us, and I follow those black prince to the T. I don't do anything else. When we open the rock, we charge $600 per share. Where that price comes from? 1919, Mr. Garvey organized the Black Star Line movement. He charged $5 per share. But if we apply a cost of living adjustment of 5% over all these years, it's exactly $600. We have African people who came in and invested their money in the tune of $1.7 million to create the rock. We want to create the rock. Not only in Queens, we want it in Brooklyn. We want it in Manhattan. We want it everywhere. 
our people live. But for that to happen, each and every one of us must play a role. Brothers and sisters, the organization, the government that Mr. Garvey built is still here. It's still here. Mr. Garvey said every African people who have African blood coursing through them is a member of the UNIA. He said there are two types of members. One who is active and the next one who is inactive. Brothers and sisters, all we have to do is to activate our membership in the UNIA again and make the UNIA be what it's supposed to be. I want to thank the organizers of this great event here. It's always good when African people can come together to address the cause and the objectives of African people. But as I close, brothers and sisters, before I go, I don't go anywhere and speak without taking the voice of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey with me because our ancestors only die when we stop talking about them. They only die when we stop canonizing them. That's right. So brothers and sisters, Mr. Garvey worked in New York City. They brought him up on Trump charges. Somebody asked Mr. Garvey again, would you change what you do? Mr. Garvey said no. What I did and when I did it, I knew exactly what would happen to me. He went on and said, man who are in earnest are unafraid of consequences. Meaning, we must do what we honestly believe is true and right and positive for our people and forget about the consequences. Brothers and sisters, they convicted Ms. Ms. Mr. Garvey in New York City. And they put him in the federal penitentiary in Atlanta. Mr. Garvey thought that they were going to kill him in prison. So he wrote a letter. And he sent that letter to all the UNIA chapters all over the world to advise UNIA members that he will be with them. And in the letter, Mr. Garvey said, after my enemies are satisfied, black people, I shall come back to serve. He said, in life I shall be the same, but in death I shall be a terror! Yes. To the of black He said, if death has power, count on me to be the real Marcus Garvey if I may come in a cyclone. Pestilence or as God would have me, black people. Don't you know I shall never desert you and make your enemies triumph over you? Sister, would I not go to hell a million times for you? Would I not cry at the footstool of the Lord Omnipotent? Sister, would I not walk the earth like the ghost of Macbeth for you? Then why be sad? Cheer up and be assured that if it takes a million years, the sins of our enemies shall visit the million generation of those who hinder and oppress us. Black people, if I die in Atlanta, my work then shall only begin. For I shall live in the spiritual to see the days of Africa's glory. Look for me in the whirlwind. Look for me in the storm. Look for me all around you for with God, grace and blessing. I shall rise again. I shall bring with me countless millions from the Caribbean, North America and Africa to aid us in the fight for freedom, liberty and life. Brothers and sisters, Mr. Garvey attempted to build that city in Liberia. He started the plans in 1919. The city was supposed to be completed by, by 1925. Brothers and sisters, it's not coincidence that we are in Liberia. It's not coincidence that the ancestors kept me there for eight months. Because we started that work in Liberia in 2019. And in 2025, by 2025, we're going to build that city. We will be that, build that city. So brothers and sisters, again, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for giving me the time. I salute you. One God, one aim, one destiny. Long live Marcus Garvey. Thank you.
My apologies. I just wanted to take this time to announce that Thanksgiving, we do it for our people. We love our people, but we cannot do it without our people. And what you see here are various organizations coming together. Once again, we give our love and honor to the Honorable Michael Duncan from the UNIA. We give our love to the brothers and sisters who are here from the Uhuru Movement, the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. Uh, we have people here from African National Science. Shout out to Brother D. Shout out to Village House members who are here also. Powerful pioneers in the building, Black Panther Party and the United African uh, excuse me, the, uh, you know, everybody is in the building. We give thanks and praise. I apologize for not knowing all the acronyms, but once again, none of this can be done without us all. Shout out to Veggie Grub, who brought some beautiful, wonderful grub here. Thank you, Sister Rootsy. Uh, shout out to Zyax. Zyax, we had had some of the young children from Zyax. Shout out to Q Butter. They made some beautiful Ankh Awards. Where are y'all? We need the Ankh Awards. <laughs> They're on their way. Shout out to Damo, who did the beautiful job with the steel pan. And um, give thanks again, brothers, brother at Zyax, Keep Butter, for the wonderful work that y'all are doing, Sister Stella, Sister Botanica, and all that y'all are doing with our beautiful youth. Um, we cannot thank you enough. And um, we look forward to seeing those Ankhs when they get here. Also, um, we want to shout out uh, African Love Institute who gave us the beautiful dancing and drumming. Thank you, Baba Raphael as well. Brother Tuckles, who are in the building. I want to take this opportunity real quick. I just want to call up, I, I mean. Is anybody, do you call uh, to the front somebody to Oh, shut up, that's my car. Hold on, I got to go. I got to tell him to stop my car. Hold on. Also, shout out to Malika Ali for those beautiful brownies and princess. Um, um, Kate Swap. No, 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 I moved your car. You moved my car? Oh, yes, you moved my car.
famine that took place in ancient Kemet. Actually, on our website, on the uh, Shenmu Kemetic Ashram website, that's shenmuashram.org, uh, I have the story posted. And what's significant about that um, and if, if this is referring to with the then newly installed uh, regent, the pharaoh, the Nisu Jesu, okay? He was installed and he told his people the, the, the holy people, his priesthood, you know, you just go ahead and do what you need to do. Okay? And what was written in the sacred writings that their ancestors left behind were the rituals that were necessary to do and the offerings necessary to present, to canoe the Nishun who opened the floodgates of the Heiki. And what happened was nobody checked. It wasn't until the flooding took place, I mean, I'm sorry, until the famine took place, that they all started to, to wonder. Maybe there's something that we're missing. And Jasir ordered his holy men to do some research. And that's when they found the sacred writings that their ancestors left behind for what to do. They neglected the wisdom that was left there for them. They obediently then went and presented offerings to Canoe. And with that, he then opened the floodgates. What is the point of that? Our ancestors left behind rich writings, wisdom teachings, for us today that apply in this day and age, knowing that we would find them, knowing that they would still apply to us. In the book of the instruction of Prince Harjada, which actually is the oldest book, what do you think is the, the book of Prince Harjada? Instruction of Prince Harjada. Uh, uh, three days. Oh, the first line says, take responsibility for examining and cleaning up your own life before an outside authority is forced to cleanse it for you. That's right. That means that it's incumbent upon us to check ourselves, to be honest about ourselves, what do we need to fix? What must we change? And are we in direct alignment with the divine nature? Are we in alignment with our life paths? Are we all that we can be? Take responsibility before you end up with somebody else. Outside authorities that are more than happy to try to check to, to get you straight, okay? We in Kermit tradition, honor the notion that we cleanse ourselves every single day, just in body, but also in mind and in spirit, making sure that we take accountability. The symbol for accountability is teni, and it flies by a finger. Teni, that also means maturity. It takes a mature person to look honestly at themselves. And now, also, in the book of Amshashanki, you know, we get all carried away with cleansing, cleansing, cleansing. And it's important, but Amshashanki says, in the book of Amshashanki it says, do not often clean yourself with water only. Don't get caught up in just thinking that all you have to do is focusing on eating the right food. All right, uh, or, or taking the right herbs, or or you know all, all of those things, and, and that, that's the unfortunate thing. It's important, but it, but don't get stuck there. Don't get stuck there because some people think that that's all that, that there is, and then you'll meet somebody ten years later. They're still in the same place. Oh yeah, I'm cleansing. Okay, I'm taking my herbs. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. But what about your character? 
Mm. What about your heart? Mm. What about your mind? Have you grown truly? I tell you, if we follow the instructions that were left behind by our sages, we as a people will move forward. Let me give you an example. I just read to you a little bit from the book of uh, Prince Harjadev. Uh, and it goes on to give a very basic framework of what to do. How cool. You get to see everyone who's on the meeting. That's and good. You know, and uh, responsibility for getting yourself right. Okay. Then you build your abundance and then establish your household. Okay? Let's talk about the importance of wealth building. Okay? Partner with someone who masters, let's say here for a man, but partner with a woman who masters her emotion, emotions, mind, and intentions. It doesn't talk about going after some hot chick. Okay? It talks about partnering with a woman of substance, a woman who masters her mind, emotions, and intentions. Then it says an heir will be born to you. It is, it is for the heir you'll be driven to leave an inheritance as you craft a legacy for yourself. Inheritance. That means that you're not just focusing on living for today. That means that you are creating abundance and generational wealth. Okay? These are the words of our ancestors. Build a beautiful family funerary tomb. Be a noteworthy, make it a, a, build a, a noteworthy resting place in the glorious west of Menta. Death humbles us all. Life exalts us, but the house of death is forever. Then, seek out the well-nourished fields blessed by Hay P, and there you will put your proverbial uh, chamber. Okay, so that covers a basic roadmap of life, and that's basically the entire book. But what else is there? Very quickly, in the few minutes I have left. And the instructions of Menemope. And that probably is my favorite book. The book of Menemope, because it is a book of practical living, um, but also approaching life from a standpoint of uh, owning wellness and spirituality and practical living, and teaching you also how to deal with people in all different walks of life, as actually many of the books do. But it says here, beginning of the teaching for life, the instructions for well-being. The concept of wellness and well-being came from Nile Valley School of Civilization, from the Haiti Valley, okay? Every rule for relations with elders, for conduct toward magistrates, so knowing how to talk to people who are potentates, okay? Politicians, whatever, all right? Uh, knowing how to answer one who speaks, to reply to one who sends a message, so as to direct him on the paths of, paths of life, to make him pro prosper upon earth, to let his heart enter its shrine, steer it clear of evil, to save him from the mouth of strangers, to let him be praised in the mouth of people, made by the overseer of fields, experienced in his office, and so on and so forth. These are rich, rich teachings uh, going on. There are so many different things, such as the guardian of the mother of the god, inspector of the black cattle of the terror, the terrorists of men, who protects men in the shrine, uh, going on. Uh, and, and, but, but let me just jump to another book really quickly. The book of the one of the, the most well-known books, as it says, be not arrogant because of your knowledge. Take counsel with the ignorant as well as with the wise. For the limits of knowledge in any field have never been set, and no one has ever reached them. Wisdom is rarer than emeralds, and yet it is found among the women who gather the grindstones. Ah, if you are a leader, this is one of my favorite passages, if you are a leader, and this is truly a leadership book, the book of Atahotep, if you are a leader and command many, strive for excellence in all you do, so that no fault can be found in your character. For my age, the way of truth, justice, and righteousness is great. Its value is lasting, and it has remained unequaled and unchanged since the time of its creator. Do not terrorize people, for if you do, the church will punish you accordingly. And more. 
There's a few more. I just did a 20 week series on the teachings of Ani, the instructions of Ani, where it is a father to son conversation. And he says, observe the feast of your God and repeat its season. God is angry if he's neglected. Basically, what it means is be cognizant of the fact that we are spiritual people and do our rituals. Do what is pleasing to Neshua Neshuru. Do not neglect your spiritual side. That is actually who we are. And you can strive for success. You can strive for this, that, and the other. But without having the rituals correct and honoring that your rule is fruitless. Libate for your father and mother who are resting in the valley of the dead. When the rule witness your action, they will say accepted. Do not forget the one outside. Your, your son or daughter will act likewise and do the same for you. And then do not go out of your house without knowing your place of rest. This is like life insurance. This is telling us the importance of having all of that taken care of so that you're not a burden on your family. This notion came all the way from Kemet. Do not rely on another's goods. Guard what you acquire yourself. Do not depend on another's wealth, lest he become master in your house. Build a house or find and buy one. This is about owning your own. This concept comes from our ancestors. Do you know how much wealth, a wealth building conversation there is in our ancient uh, wisdom? And then also the importance of health. Health in the legacy that they left behind. I tell you, if I had, had these teachings when I was a young woman, I'd be sitting on a mountain of money right now. But it's important to understand that they also talk about the importance of sharing your wealth and not getting caught up in wealth. In the book of Manamope, it stresses a different idea of, of wealth so that you're not consumed by things, but that you're aware of having what you need, being comfortable, being at peace, and building a relationship, really stressing, building a relationship with the most high creative force. What is your legacy? Where are you in building up your inheritance? What is your mindfulness at this point in where we are today? And don't get me wrong, because there are also passages about activism and the importance of speaking out when things are wrong. We have the, the, the story of the eloquent peasant, which is a perfect example of being persistent in your goals when you know that you are in the right and government is in the wrong. He approached it, and you know the story. Uh, for those of you who don't, there's your homework. Look it up, okay? The, the, the story of the eloquent peasant. He goes before the court nine times to plead his case. And he eventually wins. But because of the fact that he was so very eloquent, so well spoken, and he knew his facts, and he was he was persistent. So even activism is shown to us. Dig in to the sacred wealth that has been left behind for us in the writings. It even talks about the importance of leaving books behind for the generations coming up. Our ancestors knew we would find these words thousands of years ago. And you know, I'll leave you with this. The funny thing in the book of, in the instructions of Ani, after Ani goes through all of these great wisdom lessons, even telling his son, listen, this is how you deal with your boss who's pregnant, okay? This is how you deal with your wife. He tells him to how to respect his wife, that he needs to respect his wife. There are many writings regarding that too, and how women should be respected. Wives should be respected. Relationships should be respected. 
And that women should be loved. That's right. Adorned. That's right. And treated like the gold that they are. After all of these instructions, Ani's son basically says, yeah, dad, that's cool. You know, I mean, these are really some wonderful words that you're giving me. But see, that's you. I can't live up to that. I'm not the scribe of Ani. I'm me. So that's cool. You know, but you can just keep your information to yourself. And Ani answers him basically by saying, when you are mature, then you will understand and come back and want you to see. Be willing to receive the gems that have been given to us. The sacred tool offers everyone surprisingly great grades. Yeah, right. Today's world. From our ancestors all the way to today. Thank you so much for having me. And if you would like to have more information, please visit Shenu. Shenu means the harmonious circle, but it's also the introspective circle. Shenu Kemetic Ashram. Shenu Kibut Kibut. Uh, and that is at shenuashram.org. You can also go to my website, tweetmotherismaku.com. Much, much love and respect to everyone here. And I pray for your success, for your oneness with the divine, and with your being armed with knowledge of self. Reiki and Thank you so much. so much again, Reverend Dr. Queen, Mother Paco. Okay. Thank you once again for that. And we want to shout out some of our other elders who are here joining us virtually. Of course, you know we have the beloved Mama and Baba, uh, Dr. Jeffries here. We also have Nana Bakan. They don't need to see me. They know my voice. And we also have the beloved Baba, Professor James Small in the building. Give thanks for y'all joining us virtually. Let me shout out a few other people that I see who's out here. Um, Nana Bakan, uh, Rootsy, ain't you here? Okay, all right, so excuse me.